Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. A while back, my wife was leafing through the junk mail ads and such and came upon this ad here for a speckled upright spoon rest. It's for a kitchenware for the larger spoons and such that uh, go in, are used in the kitchen. And she said, can you make one for me? I said, no. Uh, that, that, with a curved edge like that, it's just impossible to make. But we talked about it more. It bounced around in the brain a little bit more. And, uh, well, here they are. I decided to make a ring out of oak, slice it, and put another ring of walnut in there. Sounds simple, right? No. Well, once you make a ring out of oak, then you've got to be able to hold it and slice it and then glue in the other ring for the accent wood but by the way that now happens to be an oval and is not a perfect circle so you've got to deal with that and by the way you do have to hold it on a on a lathe somehow and finish it up and so this was quite a project for me I don't know whether I'll ever make one exactly like this again but there's always a genesis of future ideas. I'm not sure where this will lead me. I present it to you to see where it will lead to you, and I would appreciate all your suggestions in it. But for now, let's go ahead and turn this pair of spoon rests. Can't let the ads have all the fun. In this series of pictures, I'm gluing segmented rings for the main body of this project. This is four rings on each side. I'm using the lathe for alignment onto a wood faceplate. This does not take as long as you may think. Since there is no stress on the joint, I can add the next ring within a couple of minutes, depending on shop temperature. You may notice that the glue on previous rings still looks very fresh. Now that the glue has dried a bit more, I can drill out the excess wood from the center with a large Forstner bit. The oak is very hard. The drill gives a good precise interior wall. Don't forget the matching stack. With several faceplates in play, I can swap them in quickly, easily, and reliably. With the two halves drilled out, I can glue them together. It was much easier to drill each half with a more shallow depth than join them together. Now to slice the cylinder on a diagonal. This is an interesting cut and potentially very dangerous. To assure safety, I am using two generations of my bandsaw jig. This is possible because I have a threaded faceplate on both ends. With my next jig revision, I will incorporate an auxiliary sled upright. Well, no, I already have one, the one on the left. The jig on the right guides the straight cut at the selected angle and position, then slowly make the cut, keeping my appendages far away from the blade. Now to glue in the walnut center rings. Please note that the oak surface is not a circle, it is an oval. So I made a pair of walnut rings using the split ring technique. This enabled me to add an additional rectangular segment on both sides to make my oval rings. I'm using the rub technique to glue the two pieces together. This would be extremely difficult to clamp otherwise. Then the same for the other half. These rings will give a side grain surface on each top instead of end grain. Now to smooth out the exterior of the center tube. The two walnut rings are joined with double stick tape. A band clamp reinforces the tape. Then for safety, I'm adding duct tape around the band clamp to protect me. Then carefully tool down the exterior on both sides of the band clamp. The oak is hard and the differing grain angle on the walnut adds more difficulty. So easy does it. Most of this work will be with shear cuts with the handle down and cutting edge nearly vertical on the wood. Then move the clamp down for access to the middle. Next, part off the faceplate, making sure to stay in the waste wood of the faceplate, then trim the surface. With new access to the interior of the cylinder, I have access to the excess wood on the walnut rings. Now I can drill it again with a slightly larger Forstner bit to clean it up again. 
This is now Full Depth. By the way, I also prepared two bottoms. Each consists of three rings. The center walnut rings were split in half and re-glued with epoxy and a layer of fiberglass. This will strengthen the bottom and prevent any possibility of splitting. Now I need to drill a shallow recess with the same diameter as the center cylinder. I follow that with a slight hollowing to profile the bottom while I remove the drill center. Now to glue a bottom to the cylinder. I'm careful to not use too much glue that I would have to clean up later. Next, part off the other end, then clean up the surface with my gouge, then refine with my sanding board. Now for the final cleanup of the cylinder and the opposing bottoms. The cylinder is now only joined by the double stick tape between the walnut rings. To remove any irregularities, I also sanded the cylinder with my sanding board. I can think of no way to round off the walnut rings other than sanding. I have a small drum sander mounted to my drill. The project is still on a faceplate. I have mounted a chuck hub to a short piece of steel fitted to my banjo, then mounted a faceplate to the chuck hub. This holds everything solid while I sand inside and outside, then back on the lathe while I sand with finer grits. The lathe is not running. I am using my left hand to rotate the spindle as necessary. With the two sections now separated, I'm parting off the faceplate. I had left the bottom segmented ring a bit thicker, so now I can part in the oak instead of the faceplate waste wood. Finally, a bath in walnut oil finishes my spoon holders. However, they will never be used in the kitchen for a messy spoon. Instead, they form an interesting display. I think the process could be used for other interesting projects. That was a wild build, and it turned out well but were and worth it in the end. My wife gave me the challenge and she is happy with the result. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions and every week I make a new wood turning video and add it to my website. Please wear your full face shield. That's for safety anytime the lathe is running. It is your last line of defense. I will see you next week with another wood turning video.